Hello, my name is David Schaefer, Managing Director of the Maltz Museum of Jewish Heritage. On behalf of co-chairs Dee Haslam and David Reynolds, with legacy co-chairs the Reverend Dr. Otis Moss Jr. and Albert Ratner, we welcome you to the 8th Annual Maltz Heritage Awards Ceremony. What an incredible time we live in when we can connect from around the corner and across the globe to celebrate the accomplishments of two transformational leaders in our community, Carol Hoover and Vanessa Whiting, this year's recipients of the Maltz Heritage Award. I want to personally thank the generous sponsors of tonight's event. Please join me in recognizing our presenting sponsors and co-founders of the Maltz Museum, Milton and Tamar Maltz. Thank you to our platinum sponsors, KeyBank, Abby and Howard Milstein, Audrey and Albert Ratner, Emily and Richard Smucker, as well as our gold sponsors, thank you, and to our many silver sponsors, bronze sponsors, and community partners. Your support of this event helps us connect with tens of thousands of students and adults. Because of you, we are building bridges of understanding between people of all ages, faiths, cultures, and backgrounds. And that is what the Maltz Museum Award is all about, which no one knows better than Milt Maltz. The Maltz Heritage Award represents the best of human nature, believing the world can be a better place and taking action to make it so. Leadership, vision, humanity. And that's what this is all about. The Maltz Museum was built on the foundation of a core Jewish value, respect for all humanity. Recipients of the Maltz Heritage Award share this value and express it through all facets of their lives. How they run their businesses, what boards and committees they choose to serve on, and which charities they generously support through their philanthropy. We're proud to recognize individuals who are committed to building bridges of understanding between people of all faiths, races, and cultures. And now we add to this impressive list there's a lot to be learned from these role models. Namely, they teach us how to lead with purpose and passion. We need that now more than ever, to know that within each of us is goodness. And when we put goodness into every facet of our lives with equal fervor, we can make a difference. We can leave a legacy of lifting up each other of lifting up our community. The Mulds Heritage Award is our way of saying thank you. And may you continue to go from strength to strength. Trust, communication, compassion, commitment. These are words synonymous with the name Carol Hoover. But it takes more than a few words to pay tribute to a community leader like Carol. Edwin and I have known Carol for decades. Our bonding began in the days of SCLC, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference with Dr. King. In those days, as one of the youngest staff members, she was one of the hardest and most dependable workers. She reached out nationwide to carry out every assignment she was given. There is no surprise that she translated her human rights and civil rights experience into a historical business venture and enterprise that embraces all of the principles and dreams and aspirations 
we experienced and experimented with in those history-bearing days. If there's anything to be done in this community, Carol Hoover is usually involved, from the airport to the Rock Hall to anything to do with sports. I mean, she is at the center of all of it, encouraging, supporting, uh, just a tremendous leader to get things done. When you look at her body of work over the years, she's been consistent in her efforts in uh, racial equality, uh, supporting diversity, and working hard to make sure that everyone has an opportunity in spite of whatever economic situation they're in or their skin color. So when you think about uh, what this award means, I can't think of uh, anybody that is more deserving than Carol Hoover. She's been about growth. She's been about prosperity. She's been about economic inclusion. She does many things to support minority-owned businesses. And as a matter of fact, she helped co-found First Bank, which was the first uh, Black-owned national bank in Northeast Ohio. But it's always with this core sense of social justice. It is part of her life experience. It's part of her worldview. So she just embodies it all from the, the side where we're really trying to make a difference and grow and create a vibrant Northeast Ohio, that it's always founded and based in the right things, the true north of inclusion and social justice. Carol Hoover is very deserving of the Heritage Award because in fact, she lives the beliefs of the Maltz Museum that all people are equal, that all people have value. You know, Carol is never one who wants compliments or accolades for what she does. She simply wants to do the best she can. But as friends and family, we are thrilled that she's being recognized for what she does for this community. It is only fitting. It's amazing, Carol, what you have done. But what is more amazing is the number of years you have done it, the people you have done it with, how you've brought people of all ages, of all generations together to do things, to accomplish things for millions of people in this community. And you do it in a way that is so sensible, that's so direct. One of the interesting things about you, you generally will ask, one question in a meeting, and it's the question that makes all of us understand that we didn't have this meeting to have a meeting, we had a meeting to resolve something. Your greatest strength is you have your eye on the prize. The Maltz Award is to take people who have changed people's lives, who have helped build the community, no one, has done a better job of this in our community than you have. Congratulations to our friend, our coworker, and one who has had an impact on so many lives, including our own. Carol, congratulations on this award, my friend. You so deserve it. Carol, I want to congratulate you for a consistent, long-standing, uh, efforts around diversity and your excellence, your class and your wisdom. I thank you for your friendship and uh, I'm so happy and you're so uh, deserving of this award. Congratulations, Carol, on the Maltz Heritage Award. We toast you and we cheer for you tonight. Carol, congratulations on this award. Very deserving. Carol, on behalf of Audrey and Albert, Congratulations, you're the best. I am honored to receive the Maltz Heritage Award. It is significantly meaningful to accept this honor with my friend, Vanessa Whiting. I admire the tremendous impact that she's making on the community and the lives of its people. My appreciation to my friends and this year's event co-chairs, Dee Haslam, David Reynolds, and legacy co-chairs, the Reverend Dr. Otis Moss Jr. and Albert Ratner, and to Milton and Tamar Maltz. We are here because of your early and enduring commitment to building bridges of understanding between people of all faiths, 
races, and cultures. Thank you for continuing to make invaluable contributions to our country. For many years, many of us have worked together to make a difference. When there were challenges, problems, or troubles, we gathered and faced them together. Once again, we have troubled times. We still face poverty, economic despair, health and racial disparities. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. told us that whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Dr. King committed his life to building a world where we would have racial equality, economic justice, and international peace. He envisioned we could have the beloved community. We are still seeking to fulfill Dr. King's work. The beloved community is not a utopia. It is an attainable state of being where we have equal opportunities to pursue all of our dreams. Over time, the answers and tactics to bring about change may have evolved, but at the root, we could depend on the vision, leadership, and humanity of those who genuinely care about our community to seek solutions. We could always depend on you. We must find a way to grow that desire amongst others to impact positive change. I have long held and followed three principles when it comes to bringing people together. First, communication is a basic step in my view. It is essential for us to communicate to start seeing some common ground. As we talk and realize what we have in common and learn from each other, we build trust. Once we invest the time to build trust, once we can feel it, we can move to opening up our spirit to give and receive. It is relatively simple. We need to communicate, trust, and love. We need to express love for each other and love for our community. We must build on hope, face our fears, corral our courage, and realize we already have the strength to love. And when love is put into action, it is powerful. Love is what can bring people together to create the beloved community. Let us now, each of us, reach deep into our hearts and souls and tap into our most innocent being, now wiser, experienced, and enriched with the resources of knowledge and benefits of influence to express our love to humankind. We must show love for each other, for the people we know, for the people we do not know, and for the community that is all of us. And when we come together to do this, we will make great strides toward achieving Dr. King's dream of the beloved community. Thank you for your commitment to working to do all you can do to build a world where all people are valued, respected, and treat it with dignity. Thank you again for making me a part of the Maltz Museum of Jewish Heritage. Good evening. My name is Grant Dinner, and I'm the board chair of the Maltz Museum of Jewish Heritage. Thank you for joining us tonight to say congratulations to Carol Hoover and Vanessa Whiting, two women, two leaders, two agents of positive change in our community. I feel inspired listening to Carol's remarks and I look forward to hearing from Vanessa later in the program. Right now, I'd like to take a pause and to recognize where we were at this time last year. In the spring of 2020, the world was on edge. The pandemic had halted our lives, the museum like so many other organizations had closed and we were forced to reimagine our work as well as our role in the community. How does an institution that relies on a structural building as its functional purpose imagine itself without borders? 
without walls. Well, let's take a look. What a year this has been for all of us. Hello, everyone. My name is Daryl McNair, chair of the Mulch Museum's flagship program, Stop the Hate. And I am here at the museum among the artifacts and objects thousands of students explore each year since the program began 13 years ago. We have reached over 30,000 students in 12 counties across Northeast Ohio, annually awarding $100,000 in scholarships and grants to students and schools. That's a total of 1.3 million in support of young voices speaking out to stop the hate. But nothing about our contest this year was the same as it had been in years past. Schools weren't going to be opening up, many were transitioning into a virtual learning environment, and our focus had to shift as well. We redirected our work from contest to content with the goal of doubling our reach, and we exceeded that goal with an estimated 6,000 touch points across Northeast Ohio. How did we do it? We developed a new Stop the Hate education portal where students could access our first ever online tour. We created new Stop the Hate writing workshops with partners Lake Erie Inc., Roots of American Music, and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Plus, we launched a new Stop the Hate learning guide and reading list for educators to download. And we did one more thing. We established a Stop the Hate Teacher of the Year Award, recognizing two educators who showcased their personal commitment to anti-bias education while working on the Stop the Hate program. Please join me in recognizing the 2021 Stop the Hate Teachers of the Year. Together, we are studying the past to understand the present so we can build a better future. Join me now in hearing from the future leaders of our community, the top 26th through 12th grade finalists of this year's Stop the Hate essay writing contest in their own words. I was pretty young the first time I heard someone say something racist. You're pretty articulate for a black person. The N-word slid off of his tongue. Yes, please. 
I'm here at Boulevard Park and I believe these two black men are selling drugs. Was that how the phone call by my father and I went? I told people I was Lebanese and then they started calling me a terrorist, saying I was gonna bomb the school. Be quiet, you smelly Indian. People stared at me for my traditional Indian clothes. Someone who I thought was a friend sneered the words ching chong ching chong. And when I saw other people laughing at me, I laughed with them. I tried to ignore it. I told myself that what I felt did not matter. I never represented the female stereotype. Everywhere I went, I would hear, excuse me, sir, or hello, young man. I heard people talk about the LGBTQ plus community, and normally it wasn't a good thing. The teachers heard his words and took no action. Why did the teacher not say anything to the boy who was so hateful towards me? I don't think adults understand the pressure when an entire group of students turns against you. The internet is filled with people who believe that this behavior is fine. Hate always starts small, starting with racist jokes and ending with violence. I began cycling through the depictions of black people and the idea of black people being unintelligent, irresponsible, and lazy throughout the centuries. 56 years ago, my grandpa marched for voting rights across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama. An African American born in 1938, my grandpa married a woman of Polish descent in 1961, when interracial marriage was still illegal in 24 states. My grandpa understood that change does not just happen. It is forged by people who act with intention. I watched the news. Protests were being shown on the news. On the day of the protests, we held our signs proudly high in a sea of other artistically crafted boards calling for justice. I'll never forget that day when someone had enough hate to call the police on us for working out. I'll never forget when a person viewed me as a criminal or a thug. I'll never forget the fear I felt when the officer approached. To think that woman doesn't know the outcome of her call or the hate and panic I felt, or more importantly, she doesn't know the real me. I've learned sometimes you have to do things that make you feel uncomfortable. But when it's speaking out against hate, it's always the right thing to do. I learned that my voice has power. Maybe if more people learned to build the bridge, innocent black men wouldn't have to fear the police. Maybe then we could stop the hate. Together, we could stop the hate. What we can talk about, we can stop. It can be very tough to get past the crowd of stereotypes. I keep myself educated and correct people who use stereotypes. I want to influence others with challenges and show them that they are loved. I desire to lead my life with love. I call for a brighter future without discrimination and hate. It starts with all of us. Everyone has the potential to influence society. There will always be people who laugh. When we laugh at others, we dehumanize them. But when we strive to put a smile on their faces, we uplift each other. Thinking about your actions or choice of words is something that anyone can do in order to be a better person. Together with our shared compassion, love, and humanity, I know we can make a difference and stop the hate. Congratulations to the top 20 finalists and to every participant who entered the contest. Thank you for having the courage to stand up and speak out. Your words inspire me. And I know you too will be inspired by the words of this young man. It is my privilege to introduce to you the 2021 Stop the Hate Grand Prize winner and a recipient of a $20,000 scholarship to the college of his choice. Please give a virtual round of applause to Thomas Smyers of Shaker Heights High School with us tonight to read his award-winning essay. 56 years ago, my grandpa marched for voting rights across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama. Before my grandpa died unexpectedly, he planned to take me to Selma. He wanted to retrace his steps with me. It hurts that we would not take that walk together, but I comfort in reflecting upon what inspired my grandpa and the convictions we shared. My grandpa believed that connection across difference is possible. An African-American born in 1938, my grandpa married a woman of Polish descent in 1961, when interracial marriage was still illegal in 24 states. Even though he faced criticism, my grandpa followed his heart and he helped racially integrate my hometown. Today, I have a close group of friends of different races, religions, and backgrounds, and cherish attending a diverse public high school in the town where my grandpa helped make my experiences possible. My grandpa understood that change does not just happen. It is forged by people who act with intention. 
With that understanding, the very first activity I joined in high school was a student group on race relations, also known as SCORE. Through SCORE, I've coached fellow students to be upstanders, not bystanders, against bias, bigotry, and bullying. When George Floyd was killed last year, I thought about the lessons that I've learned from SCORE, and I heard a call to action. The action that affected me most deeply was participating in the Juneteenth March in Washington, D.C. With thousands of fellow Americans, I marched, while wearing a mask, chanting, this is what democracy looks like. Standing in the shadow of the MLK Jr. Memorial were the words, out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope are engraved. I felt connected to the hopefulness my grandpa felt as he marched years ago. After returning from Washington, D.C., I spent some time thinking about how to advance racial justice in America. I ultimately decided that the best way to, was to support voting. I signed up everywhere I could find a volunteer, but it wasn't easy to find a place a teenager could plug in. Eventually, I found a way to volunteer at voter registration drives. I also helped organize the delivery of over 2,500 handwritten postcards to voters in Ohio, Georgia, Florida, and Alaska. Wanting others to benefit from my legwork, I created the website, teensgetoutthevote.com. The website includes resources to help teens and the adults in their lives get out the vote, get out and volunteer. At the end of the march 56 years ago, Dr. King famously said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. I like to think that even without retracing my grandpa's steps on the Edmund Pettus Bridge, I am walking in his footsteps and helping to bend the arc of this nation towards a more equitable and just future. My grandpa would be proud of me, but he would want me to keep going. Won't you join me on the journey? Thank you, Thomas. We know you and all the Stop the Hate finalists and participants will continue to lead by example, just as tonight's Maltz Heritage Award recipients have done. There's a saying that there is no limit to what you can do if you don't care who gets credit. And when I look at the things that Vanessa does and the way that she does them, it's, it's never about her. It's always about the people that we're serving. And I think that she, that Vanessa brings forth all of the qualities, the humility, the values, the integrity that are the reason that the Maltz Museum has done the wonderful job that it's done. Vanessa is, is truly a role model for women in business. I mean, she runs her company um, with such efficiency and such determination. and. And what she does every day helps so many people. She provides jobs and hope for so many families. When you think about uh, what she's done in the community as it relates to diversity, uh, she has been a champion uh, in the African-American community. Uh, when you think about the board she sits on, always keeping in mind that uh, you know, it's important to have a strong, vibrant community that all can participate in. She can uh, absolutely relate to, to, to all ethnicities and bring people together. When you get to know Vanessa, you learn a lot of things about her. You learn that she's incredibly kind. You learn she's incredibly competent and proficient at what she does. You learn she's an incredibly busy person. You also, you learn how devoted she is to family and friends. And you learn that she is juggling a lot more than any single person I know should be able to do. And she does that with uh, grace, charm, and a focus on helping other people all the time. Vanessa and her late husband, Tony, have been helping the community now for over 25 years in terms of employment, in terms of mentoring, and in terms of setting a positive example. And they hire those individuals that others will not hire. They give uh, ex-felons an opportunity. They give those that are underrepresented, undereducated, an opportunity. She's very engaged and very involved and more than fair. We see the fulfillment 
of the aims, ideals, and hopes, and dreams of a long struggle. And here is a person bringing that to the community and offering not only employment, but service, not only employment and service, but a message to younger generations of what excellence, preparation, and dedication can do and how success can be turned into bridges and the opening of doors for others around us and those who are coming after us. When you look for uh, someone who can give direction or if you're looking to uh, start something, Vanessa is one of the uh, first names that comes to mind. Vanessa, on behalf of Audrey and Albert B, congratulations, we love you. Vanessa, congratulations. You are a woman on a mission. Thank you for all you do. Congratulations, Vanessa. Uh, you know how much we admire you. You know how much I love you. Thank you for all you do and congratulations again. Congratulations, Vanessa. You know that I think there is not another person more deserving of this award and many more. And I'm sure you have many more coming. Enjoy your night, enjoy the award. We must thank Vanessa for being a living example of this kind of love and labor, preparation and dedication. Thank you to the Board of Directors and the Selection Committee of the Maltz Museum of Jewish Heritage, the Museum of Diversity and Tolerance, for this moving and distinguished honor. I am truly humbled to receive this honor alongside a civic and civil rights icon, my dear friend, Carol Hoover. The acknowledgement is made even more special knowing that I am standing on the shoulders of Albert and Audrey Ratner with respect to serving as a bridge across racial, religious, and socioeconomic lines. For me, Alan Audrey, the 2017 recipients of the Heritage Award, epitomize servant leadership in every sense of the word. I would like to thank my family, Lauren, Taylor, and Tony, my children who support me in all of my endeavors, my mother, Josephine Whiting, who is a young spry, 92 years old, and all of my other family and community who support me in all that I do. There are times when they work alongside me in this work. Now, the museum's mission to build bridges of tolerance, understanding with those of other religions, race, cultures, and ethnic backgrounds is even more relevant and important today with the rise of anti-Semitism, racism, white supremacy, and fascism at home and abroad. These values of diversity and inclusion, tolerance and understanding, instilled in me as a child by my parents, my teachers, my social network, and my life experiences growing up in the segregated South during the civil rights movement, have informed my life's work to fight for social and economic justice while engaging all to accomplish these goals. As an adult, I have tried to live these values as an affordable housing attorney, economic development, and community development attorney. A parent, a church leader, an active member of the NAACP, and in my social and professional groups and affiliations. The boards on which I sit and lead, and now while operating a company with over 500 employees who have not always been given the opportunities we want for all of our children. I will reach out to everyone I can and work with anyone or any group that is willing to engage to make a difference in our community and for our people. Our is inclusive. It is my hope that the Heritage Award will inspire us, all who are watching, to continue the good fight. We must work together across racial, religious, and party lines to combat, simply put, what we know is wrong and dangerous to all of us. Systemic racism in all of its forms, anti-Semitism, and policies and practices which harm the greater good and humanity. Stand Your Ground has never worked for Blacks and Jews. 
I know my good friends, Daniel Sidnor, president of the NAACP, my friend David Hallard, president of the Jewish Federation, will continue to collaborate on programs to advance the causes of justice. GCP, corporate Cleveland, nonprofits, and social service agencies working together can improve the region for all of us. Together, we will improve the social condition for all of us. We must strengthen these institutional relationships and individual relationships to advance the causes and values this museum so powerfully embodies. In the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, our lives begin to end the day we become silent on things that matter. The Maltz Museum has never been silent on things that matter. Quite the contrary, it was established to educate and encourage advocacy and action on things that matter. I first visited the Maltz Museum with my family when my children were young. We attended as a family and also with Jack and Jill, which is an African-American family group. Here, they learned more about the Holocaust, but also visited when civil rights exhibits were hosted. The Maltz has always been a museum aimed at educating all about various events and human conditions to motivate us to take action. The museum educates and advocates for things that matter. I congratulate the museum on its role in the passage of SB 372 to create a Holocaust and Genocide Memorial Commission. I am looking forward to hearing from Justice Melody Stewart in the My Story series. I am looking forward to viewing the notorious RBG exhibit, All Things That Matter. Now as individuals from whatever walk of life, to those corporate titans who are watching, our civic and political leaders, the heads of our social service agencies and nonprofits, I call on all of us to commit or recommit to live the values and ideals of the Maltz Museum. I know for one, I have been inspired by its work. I hope together we will authentically engage in the work of this museum and carry forward its ideals in our workplaces, our homes, our social circles, and our communities. Whoever your others are, invite them to a meal, an event, or just talk. Let us educate, speak up, and speak out for what we know is right. Once again, thank you to the Maltz Museum for the work you do on behalf of humanity and for this wonderful acknowledgement. I am truly humbled, but also inspired and energized. We are all better off because of you. God bless you all. Wow, what a night. Congratulations, Carol and Vanessa. We are so grateful to have gotten to know you better through this process to share with the community how you live with passion and purpose, to discover for ourselves how you lead with compassion and courage, and most of all, to say thank you for your influence and inspiration. Thank you again to our sponsors, and thank you to everyone watching. We hope to see you this summer at the Maltz Museum, either in person or virtually. Good night, everybody.